Well, welcome back to another episode of Smash and Jank. Today, we got a little bit of a different vehicle here. We got a 2014 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk, uh, trail rated. It's 4x4. It's got the V6 in it, and we're going to be doing spark plugs. Um, I've been told this is kind of a tough job, so I figured I'd record it. I wasn't planning on recording it, but I figured there might be someone out there that could use this data, use this as a confidence booster, whatever. I love the feedback we're getting. I love all of the engagement we're getting. Um, I know we're just a small channel, but we seem to be growing, and I can only thank all of you for that. So let's go ahead and get started. Smash Engineering. You need to know that I'm a writer. Tonight we gonna set the So once you get the intake plenum off, um, there is your access basically to your rear plugs is there. It's not super hard. The hard ones are, ironically, the front ones. You have to take the whole plastic um, upper intake manifold off to gain access to the front ones here. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do now. So we had to pause the video for, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, about 45 minutes. There's a bolt that holds this rear bracket. Um, it was resilient and it tried to kill me. So <clears throat> this bolt is back here, come around here and I'll show you. This bolt is what attaches the back of the intake plenum here. It attaches that, it's down, down here a little bit and it's attached to this, it's got the wiring harness attached to it. So you gotta figure out how to get the wiring harness off so that you can back this bolt out. So the bolt goes in like this and the wiring harness is attached to this side. So you gotta get the wiring harness off, which there's not a lot of room. And then you can only get you know a quarter turn on this every time until it pops out. Then once you get it out, you can pop this bracket off of here. And now that I got that bracket off, I can feel the intake is pretty wobbly there. So let's attempt to pull this intake off. Now, if you look up here, you have these bolts that come <clears throat> forward. So what you gotta do is kind of pull back, kind of lift up, pull back, and it should. I got everything disconnected. I think I do. Yeah, okay, so it should come off. So, and there is a stench of fuel. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna lay piece of cardboard over this so that we do not drop anything down in the engine. So now that I have this intake off, <clears throat> you can see that we have access to take this sound deadening or heat shield off. You can see that we have access to not only the rear plugs, but also the front plugs. So I would say, and I'm not a professional, I've never done one of these before. I would say we're about two-ish hours in. Two, two and a half hours in at this point. Um, so 
At this point, all we got to do is remove the coils um, and remove the spark plugs, ch uh, change them. Um, these are aluminum heads, so I'm going to be super careful removing the spark plugs. The threads on these spark plugs are really long. Um, and if any of the threads stick out into the cylinder, carbon can build up on them. And so when you try to back them out through the aluminum, if you just, say, put an impact gun on them and ran them out, um, there's a good chance that some of that carbon could damage the threads on the head. So um, what I like to do is a half turn back. If you feel it starting to get hard, then you go forward and go back, go forward, go back, and just kind of inch them out like that. It just kind of minimizes. It won't stop necessarily from damaging. It still could. Um, but it kind of minimizes the damage that you might do to it. So let's go ahead and cover this and uh, keep on moving. Okay, I ran across the first plug, wasn't even hand tight. Um, I started to turn it and I thought, oh, the socket must not be on there because it literally started spinning um, when I had just my hand here. So I don't know what the deal is with that one. It's got a lot of carbon blow by on it. Might have just rattled loose from the factory. I don't know, maybe someone's been in here before. I'm not sure. This one, however, is doing what I was talking about. Now, bring the camera close and listen in here. You'll hear what I'm talking about here. Oh, well, maybe you won't. You can kind of hear the threads, it sounds real gritty. So what we'll do is we'll go out a half turn and back in. And out till you feel that resistance, see right there? And then we'll go back in. And then we'll just, every time you just go a smidge farther until, yep, see there, it all. So there must have been carbon, we'll see when I pull this one out. There must have been some carbon or something on the end of these um, that caused it to, to act like that. So yeah, you can see there, um, if it'll focus. I'm assuming that just by the color difference from these threads forward, this is probably the only part that's in the actual head. And from, you can see kind of a line here, from there out must stick into the cylinder. And you can see it's kind of rusted and, and got buildup on these threads. You do not want to force these threads back through the head because if these are all gummed up and you force them through these clean threads what's it gonna do it's gonna possibly strip out or, or gouge those threads damage those threads and then when you go to try to torque the new one in there you're gonna have issues so I just wanted to go ahead and stop the uh, music and tell you guys a little bit about that because that's something you got to watch out for and, and uh, it's not a big deal but just got to be really careful on how you treat it also I don't know if you can see how well you can see that you look down in the one that I said was only like finger tight, you see the there's like a carbon blow by. Half wondering if that cylinder wasn't kind of low on compression because if you look in there, look in this one here, it looks clean as a whistle. I mean there's nothing in that one. Look in this one here and you got there's all kind and it's not oil. Um, it's it's carbon. It's like it's unburnt fuel and carbon. So, and then if I look down in this one that I haven't taken out yet, you can see it's all clean. So, something to kind of keep in mind when you're doing this, stuff to look for. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the spark plugs for a minute. Now, I got these NGK, let's see, they're LKR7DIX-11S. This is what the, the they recommended for, it's the Iridium IX. Um, which is a Roman numeral, if you didn't know. But, um, so I went with the NGKs. They're not super expensive. They're 100,000 mile. Um, so we're gonna do that. I got some copper um, anti-seize that I'm gonna put on the threads. And then another tool I like to have handy is just an old piece of flexible rubber hose. Um, the thing is, when you stick the new spark plug into this tool here, the spark plug socket, and then you put it down in the cylinder, you can't really tell if it's cross-threading when you're using the ratchet. So what I like to do 
to avoid that. Now it's really unlikely that these would ever cross thread, but what I like to do is just kind of put this that up in there. You can slide this down in the cylinder. Do not drop your new spark plugs. That's why I was doing it with an old one. But you slide it in there and you can spin this and it doesn't, it, it won't give a ton of resistance across the uh, threads. So you can kind of feel if it's going in crooked, it'll, it'll stop and it'll, you know, it'll keep you from stripping it out. Just a little quick trick. And of course, everything, 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 don't mind the airplanes going over, it's happens. Everything, 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 and I always say this, if it's some t something like this, torque, torque, torque. Now, yeah, you're probably gonna give me some crap because this is Harbor Freight, but it's the pro version. Like, what are you gonna do? It's the pro version. It's better than nothing. I have um, taken this to a shop that certifies torque wrenches, and I have had it tested versus snap-on versus everything, and I do it once a year, I take it in and get it tested because I don't do, you guys see my channel, I don't do a ton of this, but when I do do it, I wanna do it right. So, and I, one of my mottos that I tell people is if you're gonna do something, and it's not my motto, but if you're gonna do something, do it right. Um, so that's something that was drilled in my head by my grandpa, and that's what I like to try to do. So, I'll figure out the torques for this. I'm not sure what they are, but they could change. So look them up. Don't go off what you see on my torque wrench. Don't go off what you might hear me say. Look them up for yourself, verify, and don't trust anyone on a forum unless you can verify four or five other people on maybe different ones say that. Because there are trolls out there who will tell you, oh yeah, 100 foot pounds, and there you are cranking away on it until it breaks off. And then you go look and the dude was messing with you or the, the person was messing with you. So do your own research. Use whatever torque wrench you're comfortable with, but please try to torque them. Now we finished the front. Um, I looked up the torque spec. I'll put a little image if I remember. I hope I remember here of what I found. Everything said 13 foot pounds, and that's about right from what I remember from other things. Um, so I figured we'll do 13 foot pounds and see how it feels, and it felt great. I'm very comfortable with that. Um, so now we're done with the back or the front, the harder, harder ones. Um, we're gonna go ahead and move to the back and knock those out. Anytime you're working with uh, steel bolts or metal bolts going into plastic, this is something I highly recommend. I think I've said this before on the channel, but in case you haven't watched that video, what I like to do is reverse them. You'll feel it pop. Go ahead and get a close up here, because this is a nice signal. You'll see it, it'll hear it pop. What that pop is, is the threads lining up, so you know you're not making new threads because it's very easy for this metal bolt to make new threads in that plastic below it and it makes it strip out. So what you do is you run it backwards. You hear it pop, pop, pop. And then you go forward a little bit and you can feel it catch that thread.
we've got everything put together. I double checked everything, make sure all your vacuum lines, anything like that are all plugged in nice and tight. And then what we're gonna do is start it up and listen for any leaks, um, high idle, um, anything like that that would indicate that maybe uh, one of the gaskets is folded over or anything like that. So let's go ahead and start. <laughs> And we see the idle's dropping down to a thousand and it'll drop lower as it heats up. All right. Always wanna, always wanna make it squeaky clean. Squeak, 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 squeak. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Smash Engineering. If you are liking what you're seeing, smash that subscribe button for me. If you're, if you're really liking what you're seeing, go ahead and share it for me. That's the biggest way you can say thank you to me. Um, YouTube shows me the metrics of how many people share my videos to where. If you're on a Jeep forum or whatever and you think this might help, or if I made a fool out of myself and you think it might make someone laugh, share it on there. I don't care. As long as we're all having a good time, that's all I care about. So help your neighbor, keep the Smash Theory in the back of your mind, and uh, thanks for watching.